Hello everyone! So, in the previous video, in the headphone amplifier series, we started talking about uh, the power supply that we're going to be using in the project. And in that, we started discussing about shunt regulators. We did a, quite an in depth <laughs> explanation of shunt regulators over an hour, almost an hour of video. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I I was trying to make it quick, and I I just uh, I just start talking and talking and talking. And I just don't stop. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there is a lot of uh, information in the video, which is great. So in that video, right at the end, I just briefly touched into the sub subject of uh, voltage references, and I talked about the fact that you can replace the zener diode that you see here in these uh, circuits by any sort of a voltage reference like the ones that I've uh, displayed in here okay and uh, because in this case this inner diode it's just a a sort of reference voltage okay to be amplified or just to drive a, a transistor or something like that okay so in this episode I decided to uh, take a, a more in-depth look at the subject of a uh, voltage references and uh, most importantly, I want to do some experiments with these voltage references. Some of them, we are going to be doing the Zener diode, a diode, an LED, and a transistor hooked up as a diode. Uh, in order to uh, choose which one is, is the best for our final circuit. Okay? So we'll be substituting um, the reference for some of these. Okay. Now, first of all, Usually, when I've designed um, discrete voltage regulators, they usually are for amplifiers and stuff like that, where the accuracy of the output voltage is not critical. So I just usually use an LED, and I've heard like I don't remember when, but it, I don't remember where, but it was probably like around um, 2016, somewhere on the internet. I read that uh, hey, LEDs made a great um, voltage references for discrete and voltage regulators. And I just started using them <laughs> instead of Zener diodes, and I, I didn't know why. It just uh, <laughs> it just read it, and I just went with it, <laughs> and it for the most part seemed to be the case. But uh, in this episode, I decided to do something a bit li different. Uh, instead of progressing in the the supply series, uh, I want to take a look at the, these references and just test them, test them uh, both thermally for their stability. I know. Every single one of these is going to be bad, unless you uh, start going to stuff like a like um, band gap references. Uh, all of them are going to be thermally unstable. But most importantly, what I want to see is how their voltage changes with changes in current. Since uh, when you have a circuit like this, especially the this type of circuit and this type of circuit. Um, any sort of a uh, change here at the in the current uh, will first of all in this case and changing current will change the the uh, Zener voltage of this diode. In this case, since this current it will always be the same because the way that it's set here, what happens is changes in current here will induce a change in current of a, of a collector current in this transistor. And since VBE is dependent on that, you change the current here, which changes the inner voltage and all that. Um, so what I really want to know is which is going to be like the best possible alternative of a voltage reference here in order to uh, mitigate most of the problems that we have. Not to, not to solve them, but at least to uh, uh, reduce their, uh, their impact on the, on the um, performance of our supply. In order to test these uh, references, I designed a little uh, circuit. Here it is. And of course, I've also built a, a little prototype, which is this little thing right here. But uh, let's talk a bit about this circuit and see how we're going to be testing this. So, first of all, I want to have a uh, fixed current passing through these uh, references. Okay. So, I've just built a simple uh, constant current source here. In this constant current source, it will be sourcing around 2 milliamps. Uh, we're going to be able to see that later, but uh, I was uh, really 
Um, I really wanted to know how good these resistors were. I just placed like 5% resistors and when I um, uh, measure the current it was spot on at 2 milliamps and I was like pretty surprised about that but uh so we're going to get a, a, a pretty accurate 2 milliamps flowing through this it's going to be very interesting and uh what types of references are we going to be uh, um, uh testing first of all is zener diode okay so a zener diode in this case it's a uh ZPD 3.6. Uh, I didn't have any Zener diodes here. I never used them because of all the instabilities that we've talked in the previous video. So I, I had none, and I had to go out and buy them. And in the and since it was a weekend, uh, the only electronic store that was uh, open, it was about to close. Um, was the my local uh, electronic supply it, it's like a very small store and the only type of zener that I had was this thing it's pretty old like the data sheet for this is like really difficult to find and it's just from a company named diotech or something it, it's not from a big name brand like on semiconductor or something like that so this is the only thing that i have <laughs> go figure okay um, then we have a regular silicon diode, okay, just a regular diode. In this case, it's a 1N4148, just the most generic jelly bean zener, uh, not zener, uh, diode, silicon diode there is, small signal stuff. Then we have a typical red LED, okay, the most garden variety type of a red LED right here. And at the end, we have a typical NPN transistor uh, hooked up to uh, appear as a, a, a diode. Okay, so we are going to be uh, exploring the VB junction, the, the base emitter junction of it by tying it up this way. Now, it is a, a BC547, uh, so again, pretty much a garden variety uh, transistor right there. Oh, I've also added some uh, decoupling to the voltage rails just for good measure. It won't be needed, but hey, yeah, just put it there. It's basically free. Um, so yeah, this is just going to be it. Let me just uh, talk a bit about this uh, board right here. So what we'll be doing is we'll be monitoring the current right here through these terminals. Also, we're going to be measuring the voltage across them here. And here I can just select any of the references that I might want just by using this jumper. Okay, it's a pretty simple circuit, but it will let us uh, explore this in a greater detail. Okay, later on the video, I'm going to do something that will be uh, fairly interesting. Um, I also have this uh, electronic DC load. So. Just a, a simple thing. It's a, a clone of the of the classic EV blog uh, electronic DC load. So nothing new there. <laughs> pretty common, pretty uh, uh, standardized circuit. But the most uh, important bit about this, the way that I've designed this thing, is that I can just put any voltage uh, that I want in this uh, in this um, uh, terminal here. But most importantly. I can put AC voltages here. I can just use my uh, signal generator. In this case, since we are going to be uh, doing uh, <laughs> stuff in the milliamp range, and this is a one ohm resistor here, uh, we'll, we'll have to put the two millivolts, even less, we're going to be putting like a one millivolt peak to peak signal. So I'll have to use uh, something a bit better. I have a uh, HP uh, 8904A uh, synthesizer. For that, so it's a very low noise with the Rigel DG 1022A. It was just absolutely impossible. The minimum signal that it can uh, output is a uh, four millivolts peak to peak. For the HP unit, it can do microvolts all day long. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm also going to show a bit of a uh, how to set up the oscilloscope for doing such a low voltage measurements because that's very important because noise becomes a huge issue. 
And uh, that way, we'll be uh, testing something that's very interesting. I'm going to hook it up to this uh, voltage uh, terminal here. And uh, from there, I can literally just load this, uh, all, all of these uh, uh, references and uh, get a feel for uh, how much uh, of their uh, Zener voltage, in this case, or voltage drop changes according to changes in the current, because uh, we'll be sharing, just like we've seen uh, in the theory about shunt regulators, we will be sharing the current with this DC load right here. So that will be very interesting. We're going to get a, a, a good feel for uh, how much these change with the current uh, going passing through them. So that's going to be very important. I don't care much about the thermal stability because, uh, hey, can the output voltage is not critical, the uh, exact absolute value of it in the final design. But uh, voltage ripple is a huge issue. Because as we've discussed, because of the minimalist uh, tendencies of the headphone amplifier circuit, uh, it doesn't have a very good uh, power supply rejection ratio, so any ripple would just go to the output. So we need to make sure that the voltage output is very stable according, uh, in regards to ripple. And uh, so that's why I want to make sure that I get the best reference possible in terms of uh, generating ripple for the currents that we'll be um, using in the final supply. So the most important bit for me, in this case, not thermal, but the current stability of these references, okay? So let me uh, rearrange the bench, let me hook this up, this we're going to be doing later, uh, and let's take some measurements, okay? So see you in a bit. So, what we have here. Um, I am supplying the circuit with 9 volts, as described here in schematic. Um, as you can see here, in the, the uh, EV block millimeter, we are passing almost, you, you can call this perfectly 2 milliamps through our, um, through our Zener diode. We have a, we are selected with the, for the Zener diode measurement here. I've just put a jumper in JP1 here, this position. And we are measuring a Zener voltage of around uh, 3.2 uh, volts. Remember, this was supposed to be a 3.6 volt Zener. So there, right off the bat, you can see some of the discrepancies. As I've talked about, the, the different uh, currents that you pass through them, uh, you have a pretty uh, different uh, Zener voltages. And in this case, it's a pretty big difference. <laughs> uh, just as you can imagine, you know, for example, if you had a, uh, as we did in the previous video here, if you had, for example, a 10, uh, milliamp load and you're passing 15 milliamps through it um, <laughs> you would be having a bad time because it would probably be like at around 3.6 volts when uh, you had uh, absolutely no load passing through it and as soon as you start drawing like 10 uh, milliamps it will drop for, to, uh, for example like 3.3 uh, volts or something around that so you can see it's, it's not uh, the best uh, <laughs> type of a regulator right off the bat but that's, that's not what we are here to discuss, so let's just uh, uh, take a look at one very important thing. First, we're going to be uh, checking each one of these for their uh, thermal characteristics. Uh, right now, here, we, are, um, we have uh, around a 21 degrees C, so uh, that's the, the ambient uh, temperature. And uh, to heat them up, because since I want to heat them up slowly, I don't want to put like the hot air gun. Uh, to them, which is just going to heat them up very extremely fast. Uh, I just got a uh, power resistor. In this case, it's a uh, one ohm power resistor. And I'll be passing uh, exactly uh, two amps through it, so it would be uh, it will be uh, dissipating around uh, four watts. And I'll just be doing like this. I'll just be touching the case of the of this. Uh, power resistor to one of the legs of the inner diode and of the diode in the transistor and the LED I'm just going to be touching them uh, at the top so that that's how I'm going to be uh, uh, doing this experiment right I, I don't I try to get some uh, canned air to uh, try to uh, uh, freeze these circuits the, these uh, uh, devices so we could see how that would work but sadly at the uh, local electronics shop they were out of a canned air, so yeah, I can't do that. Um, but this is just going to be something quick. This is not 
going to be anything scientific. I just want to show um, how these things uh, interact when they are subject to a little uh, bit of heat, which is the amount of heat that's going to be uh, uh, they are going to be subjected when they are inside the case. Because when they uh, get uh, screwed in with the supply and all, what's going to happen is the uh, since uh, sh the shunt regulator will always be uh, dissipating some power uh, inside of the case, there will be a, a, um, uh, a temperature rise. And just like one or two degrees Celsius that uh, the temperature rises inside of the case, in case, for example, of this is anodiode, will be enough to uh, throw it way off. Okay, so let's just take a look at that briefly. So right now we're at the, around uh, 3.2 volts. For that I'm going to turn on the supply for the resistor and wait for it to warm up. It's a bit cold here, so it's going to take a, quite a bit to warm up. Okay, so let me uh, touch the lag of that center diode. Careful to not short anything out. And as you can see, right as, as soon as we touch, the voltage starts to drop. Uh, that's to be expected, since uh, it's heating up that diode and that junction, and <laughs> it's very uh, thermally uh, unstable, as you can see. Yeah, this is a uh, this is pretty poor. <laughs> We've already dropped a uh, uh, oh man, thirty millivolts just from this, just from touching it, and a uh, diode. It's not even. It's nowhere near any. Uh, so I can just put my finger on it. So as you can see, it's very thermally unstable. Let me uh, turn off that uh, resistor. As you can see, it's a uh, slowly climbing up again. So yeah, that was a uh, pretty uh, interesting thing. So um, when you heat them up, their voltage drops. Okay, and if you uh, cool them down, their voltage is going to rise. Now let's take a look at the regular diode. You move this here. Okay, now we are measuring the diode. So the diode is at a, a regular diode junction of a, around a 6. Uh, uh, 650 millivolts. Let me uh, turn on the supply. The resistor is still hot. I'm going to do the same thing, just touch it briefly. And, oh, it's, whoa. Yeah, it's it's worse. It's going down fast as well. Just by touching the lag. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty uh thermally unstable, just like the Zener diode. As soon as we remove the resistor, it starts to uh, climb up again. Now let's take a look at the LED. So with the LED, we get a around a 1.9 volts. So same thing, let's just uh, put the resistor in on top of it, and well this is interesting, yeah the resistor is pretty hot. The interesting thing is, because of the, uh, the the coating that uh, surrounds the, the, the diode inside of the LED, it's uh, getting some uh, thermal uh, insulation from that. As you can see, it's not dropping almost anything. It's dropping in the region of the millivolts, single millivolts, yeah. And I'm really just, I'm pressing this diode against the, the case of the LED. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty good in the the thermal stability range i'm i'm pretty sure it's going to be the best one yeah so uh the the case of the led provides very good uh, thermal stability so yeah right right off the bat another good point for the led so <laughs> one more reason to use leds as voltage references now let's just take a look to end this segment uh at the uh, transistor as you can see 
It's a Nyan at around that uh, 650 millivolt uh, uh, dial drop of a regular transistor. Now let's place the resistor on top of it and right off the bat again, this thing just uh, goes, yeah, it goes down pretty quick. So yeah, just like all the other uh, regular diodes that we've seen, it's just horrible. Okay, so here in the thermal stability range, the clear winner is of course going to be the LED. And uh, that was to be expected because of the whole uh, uh, thermal insulation that it has because of the, the epoxy. I don't know what this is. This is probably some kind of a, what polycarbonate. So yeah, that's providing a lot of thermal insulation for it. And uh, let me go back to it so that we can see. Yeah, see, it's very stable. So this is great. Okay, this is really great. Uh, so in the thermal range, the LED is the clear winner. So just a kind of a, a quick thing that I just want to do, just so that you could uh, see this effect at home. You can do this in a uh, much larger scale. If you put this on a breadboard, just to touch any of these things with your fingers and you will see the voltage dropping. But the LED is the clear winner. Now let's take a look at the current regulation, how they are fair in that sense, which is going to be a lot more interesting. So let me rearrange stuff here and I'll be right back. So what is this mess that you're currently looking at? <laughs> uh, I've set it all up and it's all uh, already working. Uh, what you have here is uh, the circuit. It's uh, currently measuring the LED. Let's uh, move this to the Zener diode. Uh, and here I just have my, uh, my uh, synthesizer going here to the input of our uh, electronic DC load, the signal input. Um, I've just bridged the two circuits. I'm tapping off the uh, uh, output of this and feeding it into the um, uh, DC load here. I'll be uh, injecting a uh, sine wave at around uh, one kilohertz into this circuit with uh, around uh, one millivolt peak to peak in order to uh, see how the, the circuit handles that. So we'll be uh, sharing the um, uh, around a uh, one milliamp from these uh, from this uh, the, this uh, reference to the load. Uh, we're going to be seeing the voltage differential that appears here, okay? So, because uh, of this mass, I didn't uh, plan to uh, add uh, probe points to the circuit, so you see the mass that it is right now, but it's the only way that uh, I could have got all the probes in and uh, to measure everything, okay? So sorry about that. Sorry for the mass, but this thing works. Uh, now, for the oscilloscope. Uh, here, you're seeing uh, some pretty uh, clean signals. That's for two reasons. First of all, here I am uh, uh, doing averaging, eight averages in this case, to uh, uh, filter out any spikes in, in uh, voltage here because uh, of all the noise that <laughs> is uh, <laughs> present in this thing. Uh, if I turn off the averaging, just oh. First of all, there's not only that, but I'm also applying a digital filter with a, a low pass filter of a um, 2.5 kilohertz cutoff. That way it's not uh, inducing any changes here in the amplitude of the signal, but it is filtering out all the crap that the uh, noise that's uh, around here in the bench with this uh, horrible probing technique. Uh, if we turn that off, uh, let me just show you with the the two millivolt signal, the one millivolt signal that we have here. If I turn it off, you can see right off the bat, you get a lot of uh, um, noise. And if I go in and change here to just normal, you can see this is just impossible to, uh, to measure. So that's why I have the averaging and also why I have the filters on. So, oh, so here it is. This is literally required to do this sorts of um, very uh, low voltage uh, sensitive measurements. So what are we seeing here? So we are drawing around uh, one milliamp peak to peak, since this is going to translate directly to uh, current. 
Uh, and with that, you can see that we are getting a, uh, a, a voltage differential of uh, 2.8, uh, 280 millivolts peak to peak. This is measuring the, the yellow trace. It's measuring the uh, output of the, the reference. So it's measuring this node right here. Uh, so if we have a one milli, a one volt, uh, sorry, a one milliamp uh, change in our current, we get a uh, change in the reference of let's say a uh, uh, three hundred millivolts. If we were to use the Zener diode, okay. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty horrible, <laughs> given that uh, this Zener diode is operating at what like the three point. Uh, I remember it was a 3.2 volts so right now it's going to be fluctuating from a 3.2 to like 2.9 volts so this is just absolutely horrible now let's move to the regular silicon diode and uh, right off the bat it uh, uh, reduces oh let me also make some uh, a calculation here let me go back to the to the center um, and I'm going to uh, unplug the load just so that I can uh, measure the voltage across the, um, the zener. So it is currently at uh, 3.2 volts. What I want to do is uh, calculate the, uh, basically not the signal to noise ratio, but in this case it would be like the... Um, um, <laughs> uh, out output voltage to a current ratio. So let me uh, plug the load back in. So we have a, a 3.2 volt output for the Zener. And with this uh, 1 milliamp peak to peak um, load, we get, uh, let's say, 280 millivolts of ripple. So if we divide these two values, we get a, a ratio of uh, around 11.5. So let's just store that value for later. Now let's move on to the diode. Moving to the diode, already we have a drop in, the, in our ripple. But one thing that we got to keep in mind is that even though we got a drop in the ripple, the voltage output also changed. This is a much lower uh, voltage. So any ripple in it uh, will affect if we uh, actually amplify this, which we'll, we'll do in the um, final uh, regulator. Uh, all this error will be amplified as well. So any small changes here are going to make big changes when uh, we amplify, because let's say we put a, if this, we want a six volt supply and uh, we had times 10 gain on this, this, would uh, induce a, a 300 millivolt um, ripple in the output. So that's absolutely not acceptable, okay? But, uh, so yeah, we get a, a bit less uh, ripple. So let's calculate that, uh, that ratio again. So in this case, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have unplugged that. So let me unplug the load. So we have uh, 0 0.655 volts. The output with no load, so at 2 milliamps. So as soon as we put a load, we get, let's say, uh, 35 millivolts of ripple. So if we divide, we get a ratio of around 18.7. Uh, so it is better than our Zener diode. So this would uh, be a better reference than that Zener. The greater this value, it, that means uh, just like the greater the the signal to noise ratio. It's the same thing here, the better it is. So in this case, we'll get a, a better reference if we use the diode, even though this is a, a, a lot of ripple. Uh, so now let's move on to the LED. So f for the LED, that's great because uh, we have greatly increased our uh, voltage across it. Instead of the 0.3, we get uh, around a 0.8 here. Uh, and we get the exact same ripple. So in this case, it's going to be a lot better. So let's calculate that ratio again. So, uh, oh, I shouldn't be pulling out these jumpers. I'm forgetting to 
this connector right here. So without a load, we have uh, 1.902 volts. And as soon as I connect the load, um, let's say we get uh, 40 millivolts of ripple. So 40 millivolts. So there we go. It's uh, at um, uh, 47.5 of ratio. This is an order, almost an order of magnitude better than the, sorry, it's uh, almost half an order of magnitude better than the, the Zener diode. It's uh, by far the best one so far. So the, the LED is winning yet again, not just in the thermal characteristics, but also here with the current characteristics. So to uh, end things up, let's just take a look at the transistor as a diode. You move this stuff around, put the problem point here. Okay, so we are back now. Uh, it's at uh, around a six point, uh, 0 0.65 volts. And it has less ripple than our diode. So it is better to use a transistor than a diode in this configuration. Uh, another interesting thing, I thought they would be almost the same. But there you go. This has a better characteristics. Also, if you change the transistor, this will probably change as well. So okay. take this with a grain of salt. Now let's do the same thing. Uh, the ratio measurement. Let me uh, disconnect the load. So we have a 0 0.655 with no load. As soon as we connect the load, we get, uh, let's say, a 20 millivolts of ripple. So 0 0.0. 2 divided and we get a ratio of 32 so by far it's better than any sort of diode so just never use a zener never use a regular diode either choose between a uh, simple bjt transistor or a, an led in this case i'm going for the led uh, whatever i saw on the internet a long time ago was actually th true it is a much better um, voltage reference for stuff like this but uh, if you don't want to use an LED, hey, you can just use a transistor and it's going to be a pretty okay. In this case, I'm going to stick with the LED because it offered us the, the best uh, 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 voltage to a, a current uh, drop, whatever I can say, like ratio. So yeah, <laughs> that, that, was, that was a, a pretty interesting uh, experiment. So uh, let me uh, rearrange the bench again and uh, we'll talk more after this, okay? It was an interesting experiment. We've just confirmed that the uh, hypothesis that the LED would be the best uh, reference for our um, uh, voltage regulator circuit. Now, uh, I know this video wasn't great. I must admit, I, I don't think it's a good video, but I'm going to, to submit it, to post it anyway. Um, the thing is, this is more of a documentation of the experiment that I uh, had to do anyway. I just wanted to bring you guys along for the ride. But it's also very good, uh, a very good uh, um, uh, example of the sort of stuff that you should do when you're designing your own stuff, be it um, a power supply, any sort of circuit. Just do this li these little uh, experiments. Don't just uh, accept that, hey, this is going to be the best solution for me and just go with it. Hey, just do stuff like this and experiment around and uh, confirm stuff. And also just like this, I, I already know exactly how much ripple I get. Uh, with changes in current so it was a uh, good experience to do um, so yeah just keep that in mind okay whenever you you are building something if you can experiment with a uh, simple stuff like this uh, that will be critical to your final design that helps a lot but uh yeah okay, this was a, a weird video <laughs> but uh, hey I, I hope you've enjoyed it <laughs> even though it is a uh, pretty uh, crappy but uh, hey uh, so we'll be using the LED. It's clearly the the best one out of the bunch and gave us uh, the best uh, um, uh, ripple to current ratio. Uh, and it, it is just a, a, a much better thing. It's more thermally stable and all that. So it's literally the perfect um, solution for voltage reference in a uh, simple circuit like the ones like this that we were discussing that have no uh, active feedback like uh, op amps and stuff like that okay 
And this is not critical. I just want to, all that I want with this circuit is to have something that has a stable voltage output, no matter the current. Okay. Um, so yeah, in that case, it fills the its purpose. It fulfills its purpose quite nicely. So yeah, um, if you have any questions of the stuff we did here today, leave them in the comments. If you have any suggestions, uh, I uh, I love suggestions, so hey, leave them as well there. Uh, and I hope uh, to see you in the next video. In the next video, we're actually going to be uh, showing the final circuit for the power supply. I'll also build a, a uh, probably, I'll see, I'll also probably build a, a, a prototype like this of the supply. We'll do some measurements. It's going to be interesting. This will uh, come back again. See you in the next video. Bye.